If your horse is overreacting, unreasonable, hard to deal with, and he's on grain, you may just be able to fix it by changing what you feed him. When you take the horse off grain, they are calmer and easier to ride and easier to deal with. At Layton Farm, we've gotten horses that were training problems, and the only thing we did was change their feed. Think about it this way. If you take your niece and nephew out for the day, and you give them sugar, you give them candy, ice cream, and then you take them home, their parents want to kill you because you can take a, a reasonable child who's easy to deal with and turn them into a monster. That's exactly what feeding sugary grain does to horses. You can take a perfectly reasonable, easygoing horse and turn them into a monster that you can't ride. That monster is great if you're looking for a racehorse that wants to win races because you want them to be aggressive. You want them to be on the edge. And many trainers even increase the feed leading up to the race to produce these results. These are results that you don't want in the, the pleasure or trail riding. Some instances where we do feed feeds with sugar in them, although we do try to keep it low. One is in the case of Purina Senior, which is a pelleted feed that's easily digestible. We feed it to horses that are over the age of 15 and in training. Horses that show significant signs of stomach ulcers because it is easily digestible. And any horse over the age of 17. We may not feed it totally, we may add hay stretcher to it depending on the horse's reaction to it. Um, but lots of horses, like my horse Punky over here who's 26, that's the only feed that he gets. The other instance where we will feed something that has sugar in it is beet pulp, which on average is 10 to 12 percent sugar. If a horse needs significant weight gain, if he comes to us, you know, on low on the Henneke scale, a two or a three or one, we, we do give them beet pulp because it's easily digestible. Um, it does have sugar, but it seems to put the weight on really well. And it doesn't seem to ramp them up as much as fortified feeds that are coated with molasses. And I can't tell you why. I just It's just been my experience that it seems to be easier to use. Okay. If you do get a horse off the track, and actually this stands for a lot of other horses too, be very careful what you feed them because they're highly strung horses, X race horses, and they don't need extra energy. We don't have to feed them all these protein things that um, we're told we need to. If they have good hay and not too much looser, and I would say meadow hay, and a lot of it, maybe when you feed them, you need to get the vitamins and minerals in, that's the trace element requirements, and you put that in some hay stretcher or something, which is just sort of basically only grass and hay. And really that should be enough, even though they might be thin, don't try and fatten them up too soon, because if you get a horse really well, he becomes very difficult to ride if he hasn't got trained first. So I would rather train my horse to learn that we don't any longer go flat out when we go into canter and that we turn and we stop, we do all that I want. I'd rather train him while he was a bit thinner before he started to start to look really well and then become really quite energetic and difficult. So the key, especially with a racehorse, but with every horse, is train them before you worry about how well they look. Just give them the trace elements, make sure they're wormed and all the things that we know for good management. But don't worry if they look a bit thin.